reason why people put certain stereotypes on you is because of the way you respond to certain situations. Well, I'm sorry that I talk proper or I, you know, speak in a way or portray myself in a way that might not be the norm of a black person, but I myself know that I don't want to portray myself in a way that I wouldn't be taken seriously because I am also female. And so being that I speak proper or portray myself in a proper way makes me feel like I'm credible when I'm speaking to someone else who may be a potential employer who wants to hire me in the future or a professor. And so those things kind of give me some frustration as to well, I might be black, but how am I supposed to act black or be black in that sense? In order to depict a clear picture of the harm in which stereotyping can cultivate, we performed our own rendition of a social experiment to derive both qualitative and quantitative data on how geographical location, race, and socioeconomic status can both alter both the sports played and the quantity of marginalization that occurs, as well as how early it was experienced. We performed the same experiment in both Johnson County and Wyandotte County. Cumulatively, we asked a series of questions to a randomized selection of 20 black males, 20 black females, 20 males of Hispanic descent, 20 females of Hispanic descent, and 20 males of Eastern European descent, as well as 20 females of Eastern European descent. At the end of the class, when we were all walking out, the teacher began this cliche, you guys will never amount to anything speech. And I was one of the last kids out of the room, so me challenging him, like I tend to do, <laughs> I asked what he meant by, we would never amount to anything. Well, his response was, he rolled up his sleeve and pointed at his skin and stated, look at the color of your skin. He turned away, walked away, and just left me standing there. I mean, that's probably one of the earliest moments that I could remember that, you know, the color of my skin or my ethnicity had affected someone else's uh, opinion of me. Do we all look gay? Do we all look the same? Am I only allowed to look a specific way? Should I wear a big sign over my head that says gay? I'm a Russian female and English is my second language. So a lot of the times when I was learning English, I would pronounce it with a Russian accent or I would commonly forget the word. And um, I used to be made fun of a lot at school. I remember one time in particular in second grade, I pronounced me wrong and everyone started to imitate me and I felt so out of place and I think with memories like that stick with you for a long time. I just moved to the States and actually I can uh, see the racism in the state is much stronger because uh, people coming from uh, much uh, other places and other colors and other stuff so they like uh, I can see like groups of uh, white people and groups of black people and separation and all of that stuff, uh, and if, even if in their behavior and, and stuff like that, I'm only here two weeks. I think the first time that I realized that I was a minority was in the first grade in 2001, right after the September 11th attacks. I realized that I was a minority because whenever someone would talk about Osama bin Laden, they would laugh, look at me, and ask where my uncle is or when my uncle is going to be captured. I was probably about 13 the first time that an older male looked at me and sexualized my appearance based on the fact that I'm conventionally pretty and had started wearing push-up bras. And even though my shirt at the time was not low cut, it had SpongeBob on it, so it had these like green dots almost directly over my boobs. That was probably the first time. So I was 12 going on 13. Um, 
Do I think that my gender or social class impacted the way that I was stereotyped? Absolutely, my gender had plenty to do with it. My social class, the way I grew up until I was a teenager, I was about middle class, um, lived with grandparents who were reasonably well off. But I was the oldest of three children to a single mother who was living with those grandparents who were middle class. The difficulty there, uh, my mother got married, so we moved out of my grandparents' house. They got their own place. Um, I was on either reduced or free lunch, depending on the year and the tax return. Um, so I was definitely marginalized there. Um, being pretty doesn't change the fact that poor people are looked down upon. Um, so I definitely felt it from the lunch ladies who looked at me because all I could afford was the PB&J. Uh, that was maybe sixth grade to middle school. Um, that definitely had a lot to do with it. Um, I grew up in a predominantly uh, Christian high school. So with the predominantly Christian high school, predominantly everyone was white. Um, I didn't really realize the difference between skin colors. I knew that I had, there was a difference, but I didn't really feel like I was treated any differently. Um, it wasn't necessarily until I got into high school to where I really became aware of my surroundings. I could say that growing up, I realized that there were more um, racial jokes, uh, slurs, um, more things that kind of were stereotyped. And definitely raising, being raised in the family that I was, my dad being a preacher, my, my mother working in the government, they made sure that we were going to be raised to make sure that we were the best people that we could be. Um, so anytime that someone did try and stereotype, they definitely were surprised when I did not match it or fit it just because we gave them a refreshing um, first impression. Yeah, to give you the background, I was adopted in Bogota in 1991. Um, in general, I had an okay time fitting in because um, I grew up in the 90s where parents and other authority figures encouraged students to develop a colorblind mentality when engaging with people of color. Um, as an adult woman of color, I find that very problematic, although well-intentioned, but it definitely uh, influenced the way that kids treated me, and it still does today with adults who never questioned or unlearned uh, this behavior. That being said, um, the answer to the question of when I first felt singled out in a K-12 setting was when I would get asked both in public and at school and um, in other settings when I was with my parents if they were my real parents. Um, I, I still get that and I always would just say, because they look so different from me, and I would always say, you know, I have biological parents just like you, just like everybody, but my real parents are the ones who raised me. I grew up in a more affluent white part of town. Um, without many other pe people of color, and the same thing with the schools that I, I went that I went to, um, almost no other brown or black kids. So I felt like people expected me to represent my whole race, um, often because there are other impressions of Latino people and adopted people were shaped mostly by pop culture and the media uh, rather than first-hand interaction. The first time I ever felt stereotyped at K-12 through schooling was in kindergarten when my brother and I, being the only white people in our entire elementary school, would go out to recess every single day and go stand in the group of kids that would want to play football, basketball, or soccer and never get chosen. Uh, that was the first time I felt stereotyped and I think it was because the kids believed that my brother and I were uh, inadequate at sports because of the color of our skin. When I moved into a wealthier neighborhood, the kids would be very reluctant to hang out with my brother and I at our house because we didn't have a lot of money and they, therefore they thought we didn't have a lot of food and that we couldn't supply them with the right amount of fun. So they would always suggest a different option before going to ours. Hi, my name is Nate Nelson, and the only time I had experienced a stereotypical issue or situation um, through high school was my AAU basketball coach. Um, he, was, he was formerly from uh, University of Kansas here, and I was on an all-white basketball team, and um, during this he called a timeout, and he was yelling at me because he said, is this other guy quicker than you? He's, he's, jump, he's out jumping you. He's just a lot quicker than you. And he's like, is he? And he questioned me about it, and at the time I wasn't like too, I wasn't, it didn't really dawn on me or anything like that. I just felt like I was a slow player. But like after it was like looking back at it now, I, I did think it was kind of a little bit um, racial for him to say that to me. And so typical, obviously, being black and having that um, racial profile, you know, um, being able to jump and be super quick and everything like that. 
but at the time I didn't I didn't think about it too much but looking back at it kind of it impacted me in a way just thinking like okay that's that what came out to be a bigger issue than it was Hi, my name is Lexi Guscos, and as a half-black biracial adopted woman, I have been stereotyped because someone once told me that a shirt that I wanted would be much easier to find than my real biological dad. But especially in my workplace, I am a, a project analyst. I have my degree in finance, and people automatically assume that I'm the numbers guy. So whenever there's math involved or any complex numbers, I would have to deal with it or they automatically assume that I should uh, look over or hand me the work. So I still feel stereotyped up to today to answer your question. As a pretty white female from a middle class family, I get a lot of looks for the fact that I'm currently on food stamps as a single mother. I have a number of tattoos, which I paid for when I had a really good paying job at the time, and that was before I ever had a kid. Uh, but they assume, oh, you have tattoos, you have, you know, Ugg boots, you have a Michael Kors bag. All things that I bought for myself or were gifts when I had a good paying job. So I'm definitely marginalized there. I'm not, I, I shouldn't be on food stamps. I'm an educated, attractive white woman from a middle class family. I shouldn't need welfare. Well, life is what life is, and that's not always what we expect or hope that it's going to be. Absolutely. Now that I'm so. more aware of how institutional racism operates and the importance of intersectional feminism in crafting responses and solutions to racist behavior, um, I, I definitely still do feel stereotyped, yes, like all the time. In fact, way more often than when I was a kid because I, I recognize the behavior for what it is and I'm aware of the lack of representation of women of color um, in the media besides having very stereotypical portrayals so that's in my personal life and also in pop culture at large um, we found that in lower socioeconomic areas with the majority of the population accruing similar races which we found present in Wyandotte the presence of racism and marginalization was not as prevalent whereas the selection pool in Johnson County claimed that they experienced it far earlier and far more intensely. This data was constructed using the percentage of yes answers made by the people of whom we asked, did you experience stereotyping in K-12 schooling? Students, especially minority students, desire a teaching pedagogy that many teachers struggle to articulate, otherwise known as culturally relevant pedagogy. In order to assist within lowering this division, we must liberate ourselves from the predisposed socialization and dispose of the inequality that marginalization brings. Um, it's not my responsibility to educate white people. It's uh, an entitled thing that sometimes they ask to be educated. Um, it's never my responsibility, it's their responsibilities to seek answers for themselves and my liberation will stem from their willingness to listen to the lived experiences of people of color without interrupting, examine their own biases and prejudices, and practice learning them. Um, I feel stereotyped, but I feel that if you don't let negativity affect your daily life or your goal and the end, then you can prevail past anything. Uh, do I feel that today? No. I mean... Today, I think people see me more for who I am than what I am. But, you know, moments like the one I just referenced have also made me prouder of me being a Hispanic man. So, no, I, I mean, I, things are much better. So what does that mean? That means that you have to be the very best that you can be. Follow your passion. Follow what it is that you really want to do and give the world. And just go for it with all that you have. And with that, I think you can have a beautiful life. You can actually live your passion, live your dreams. And the bottom line is, no matter what, don't let anybody tell you what you can or cannot be, what you can and cannot do. Because only you decide what it is that's important to you and what it is that you are willing to work day in and day out, day in and day out to actually make it work. So I think, I think it's awesome. I think it's wonderful. So just follow your dreams and be authentic to who you are.